okay good day guys today I'm going to teach you how to create a DVD inlay for your DVD case okay I'm going to design something like this which is a slim case with 7 millimeter at the center okay obviously there's a 14 millimeter center the thickness in the market so you can adjust it accordingly okay how I do it first you go to the file here then you click new so for inlay normally we will use the international paper of A4 size so this is the uh, vertical view so we will change this into horizontal so we will change this to 297 mm x 210 mm with a resolution of 300 pixel per inch and CMYK color mode for printing purpose so this one we just named this as uh, inlay cover dvd1 okay from here um, okay be aware that the size of the the size of the inlay will be 268 millimeter times 183 millimeter is something like this. Okay, we'll just drag this over here. Okay, so we want to create precisely uh, 268 millimeter times 183 millimeter. Okay, 7B is actually a code. This is a code for DVD case which stands for 7 millimeter black, single black doesn't matter here okay so how do we create this size here okay first we'll use the view new guide we'll set the hor the vertical as one centimeter and horizontal one centimeter this one is to give you a bit of uh, what you call that the part which we don't want to for allow for cutting purpose okay so now we'll create the width of the inlay which is 260 millimeter so add one centimeter on the left side here so it should be 278 millimeter or 27.8 centimeter Okay, we'll create a new guide here with 27.8 centimeter. We we'll get something like this. Okay, now we'll create the lower part, which is the height. So 183 plus one centimeter on the top here. So you should get 193 millimeter. So you can put in centimeter or millimeter, whichever you prefer. Something like this. Okay, so now we'll use the arrow key just to lower down this text here. Okay, next. Okay, next what happened is we try to use the rectangular marker tool here. And we use the fixed size of 268 times 183 millimeter. So this one is to give you the idea that our guidelines is correct so now we'll press the control shift i to get the selection outside the current selection and we'll paste it with a uh, light gray color so something like this but we make sure we create a new layer here and we paste it here and we press control d to end selection okay we'll just put the text here Control Shift I I for Tally to select the selection 
so this is shortcut key that I used earlier okay so another shortcut key that I will use is control D to end the selection okay so this is the shortcut key that I used earlier okay next we will try to get the middle part here just to make sure is correct so okay I'll bring this up here okay 268 mm if you divide by half you'll get 134 mm so we'll add on the one centimeter here so it should get 144 millimeter which is the center position of the inlay something like that so we can do an estimation which should be correct so the middle part here will be 7 millimeter of course there is uh, other cases which uses 14 millimeter so you can do the um, the size according to your inlay and your casing so since it's 7 millimeter so we should minus back um, the 144 millimeter will minus 3.5 millimeter so you get a vertical of 140.5 millimeter something like this okay then we add 7 millimeter we'll get 147.5 millimeter so this is all about mathematics so you should do some uh, calculation before you do this okay this is a center we can just remove this part just put it aside so we roughly know this is the thickness of the slim DVD case okay so now we will add the background image we'll just open background image just make sure uh, it's a high resolution file then we use the rectangular marker tool and we'll copy okay so this one you can change back to normal size and you can just drag it left click on your mouse and drag it and press ctrl c to copy and ctrl v to paste it ok so this is the shortcut key i will use ctrl c to copy and ctrl v to paste ok so from here I will use another shortcut key ok let me put it here control T to select for resize press and hold on shift button to get proportion of the size ok so this is the shortcut key which I'm going to use here ok make sure you always uh, select the current selection always make sure this one is auto select so we'll go to the layer that is that I go to ok <coughs> ok now you press ctrl T and you can resize it you know, while I hold on the shift button you see it always will be resized in the same proportion so just like that so make sure it's larger than the inlay size just like that and double click on it ok what we can do here is um, there's a few options here one one uh, option we can do is just press we can use this rectangular mark Q tool here go to the fixed size and we get back the exact size of the inlay so something like this so now we will use back the, the shortcut key Control shift i for Italy to select the selection outside the current selection Control shift i so you get the selection outside the current selection here 
so you can always press delete so something like this and you press Ctrl D to end the selection so this is nicely like that okay there's another option which I will show you okay now I will show you a shortcut key is called Ctrl Z to undo and Ctrl Z holding on holding alternate button to undo further okay so I will show you another method here okay press control Z something like this okay so I, I, I don't want to I will just copy this because I don't want to undo this later Okay, press Ctrl alternate Z few time. We'll go back to the original uh, part right here before I do the adjustment. Okay, press Ctrl D to end this selection. Okay, another option which we can do here is you can add this this button here. It's called layer mask. So what's the purpose of layer mask? Okay, the same thing we go to the rectangular marquee tool here with the same fixed size here we press here okay now we go back to the control shift i shortcut key here and we press delete and we press control d to end the selection okay what happened to the layer mask that i want to share is you can always right click here and disable the layer mask so you always can get back the original design of the background here and we can do the adjustment to the to the uh, background here you know without uh, losing the original part of the background design so you can just enable the layer mask we will just uh, hide the area but of course uh, we have to to adjust it before we create the layer mask okay so we just press control I will show you the control Z again to undo and control alternate Z something like this So what next? We will try to add the wording on the middle part here. Okay, just to simplify it, I will just uh, copy from the the one that's done here. Okay, I just copy it and I will paste it here. Obviously, you cannot see clearly the wording here, something in white color. So, we'll add the blending option. We'll just change it, the stroke here, we change to red color, something like dark red, but not really dark. Okay, then we can adjust the size accordingly. Okay, so from here, we need to make it vertical so we will use the control T and you can see here this is to resize it and this is to change your position okay, while you change it something like this you can see here somewhere near to 90 so we just adjust it to 90 so we will get the exact vertical position then just double click on it then we use the arrow key to adjust the position something like this okay next 
we'll add the wording here. Okay, again we'll copy the wording here to make it uh, faster. So we just copy it. And this one we'll close it. And we'll paste it here. Okay, so you can always adjust the size to make it nicer. Okay, but this one I will show you something a bit different. Okay, so I will just delete this. I'll show you. Solo. position it here okay now we will try to make it bigger something like this okay to make it look nicer we can actually add a space in between the character here here we add one spacing also we we'll add a space here so this is a way to make the design look more professional okay then we can adjust the size to make, make it uh, smaller something like this then we will add the blending effect later okay so we just add one more word here Zoom. 2016 and we'll resize it smaller something like this we'll position it here okay then okay okay let me add some blending effect here the stroke let me change back to the rate okay if you want to make sure you always get the same rate as you used earlier you can always go to the text here you can press control plus or minus to enlarge it you can always use this eyedropper tool to get the red color you, know, you can always get different different color but you, you, want, the, you want to get the red so you just click here then we will select this text here oh, sorry we just go to blending option and we add the stroke color to the red here so we use this and press ok and we enlarge it something like this <coughs> so this is it this is the shortcut key I will use control plus Wording you can see 
here is a special thanks to my mom and dad for the motivation. For the motivation, my French have sent out for inspiration. And another word is the all right reserve. So we can edit somewhere here. And we position it to the center and we'll add the. Now we can use this. We can copy the layers sound and paste it here. Okay, something like this. Okay, you can see clearer. Okay, so we can always add a new guide here, just make it three centimeter vertical. So you can always pull it here so we can get the wording to position it in the same alignment with the bottom here. Okay, and we can also add one more guide. 3 cm horizontal let's say I want to position everything just below the line here and this also below the line here so everything will be nicely positioned then we can always hide the guides to see the overall uh, design okay it's about uh, done so that's all about it okay and lastly we'll add one uh, DVD video logo here so same thing you will just use the rectangular tools make sure it's in the normal size and drag it press ctrl c to copy okay let me drag this here Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste it. Okay, then we will use the Ctrl T to resize and hold on the shift button and make it smaller, something like this. Then double click on it and position it. Sorry. Always press Ctrl Z to undo if mistake. Okay, make sure um, you get the layer correctly. Okay. So now this one we can add the blending stroke. We will use white color here and enlarge it. You can always double click here, but slow double click instead of double double click it slowly. And always rename the layer and click it. So this is all about it. So and one last thing I want to show you is if you need to delete this portion you can always use the magic wand okay so make sure it's we are not uh, selecting this layer here okay this is the layer that you want to uh, hide it okay we can just hide this okay you can always use the line tool here and pull it straight Pull it straight here. Okay, so actually you are using a dark red here, so you can always change to black if you needed to. Just pull it like that. Just pull it. So this is all. These are all the lines that I created. You can always hide the extra here. You can see. So this is something that you can always submit to the uh, for printing purpose later. So earlier what I was talking is called bleeding. You can always hide the disable the layer mask. So this is actually the bleeding area. So you can always uh, hide it. So as long as we submit this PSD file to the designer for printing purpose, they will know uh, how to do the adjustment. So we will just save this as inlay cover DVD one in PSD format. 
and we also save it again in jetpack file sorry a mistake here you can always save this in jetpack file or pdf whichever you prefer so the reason why we have two separate files is because uh, the photoshop always as you can see here so it's about 34 megabyte whereas the jpeg file will only less than 2 megabyte so this one we can send to our client just for viewing purpose if let's say they say any adjustment required then we can adjust accordingly in the uh, photoshop file later and before we submit for printing purpose okay that's all about it thank you guys for watching and hope you learned something